Have you ever had something embarrassing happen to you while you were speaking? Maybe you tripped over a cord that was in the way. Maybe you started speaking and the microphone was turned off. Maybe you started speaking and you just couldn't speak for a while, your voice was too hoarse. If you've ever been in that situation, you know that there's that fear, that nervousness that gets to you. You feel a little scared. In other words, what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to handle that? I've had that happen. One time I got up and I'd been speaking for a while. And I was speaking for a while, and it was going along with my speech. It was going pretty good. Things were pretty fine. But I wasn't as familiar with my speech as I should have, as I should have been. It was a new speech. I hadn't really had time to practice it or worked on it. I was doing it kind of last moment, and so I had a few no cards, just to make sure that I was okay and I kept my place. And right in the middle of my speech, the no cards fell and they just splashed all over the place. And I had to get down on my hands and knees and pick them up. And after I had them all picked up, I looked at the audience and I didn't know what to do. I just went on with my speech. And I finished, and afterwards there was a little bit of a usual sort of applause, but I could tell the audience was a little bit nervous. And they weren't really going to remember that speech, and they weren't really comfortable at all. And I was very uncomfortable, and I just left quickly after that speech was over. And afterwards I just kept thinking, if I only could have said something creative, something invented. My mind was just faster. If I could have just said something that really was clever and, and interesting and fun and got everybody kind of relaxed and it would have helped the speech go much better. I just knew how to do that. And I didn't. And so that speech was, was difficult. But it made me realize that there probably was a way to develop creativity. There probably was a way to develop this creativity so when things happen, you can quickly respond to things and, and have some sort of quick answer to those situations. It made me realize that I was prepared beforehand. Then I could do a better job in those situations happen. And I discovered there was something called improv. Improv is where you get up in front of an audience, no preparation, and you just respond. You just respond. You just respond to whatever comes out of the audience. The audience calls things out. You just respond to it. The thing I discovered later about improv was that you had to prepare to be able to respond to things that way. And I learned this when I was listening to a person called Izzy Gessel. You see, Gessel is a imp professional improv person and a professor of improv. And Izzy explained that improv is something that you stand up and sure you react to spur of the moment, but you have to be ready for that. And I listened and Izzy gave some three very useful improv games you can play to help you develop this creativity and venomous. So today you will learn about those three games, how they can help you develop your creativity. Find out how to use those games, how to simply develop your creativity so that you're in a situation where things are falling apart and you aren't quite certain what to do. You can improv your way out of it. Today you will learn how to get in the game of improv games you can play to make sure you don't have to face any more speaking disasters with nothing to say. 
One game that Izzy mentioned is a game designed to, to free up your mind and to get you out of the habit of ignoring things. It's so easy to ignore things. And if you get in the habit of not paying attention to ignoring things, that's when you start to do things like tripping over cords or dropping your note card because you weren't paying attention. If you use this game, you start to become more aware. You start to see things around you better. You start to really zoom in and pay attention to those things that are going on outside you. This game will transform your awareness of the world around you. It's a simple game, an easy game. And yet this game of tremendous abilities to develop you and your awareness of the world around you. Do you want to get in the game? You want the game and practice this game. And the great thing about this game is you can do it anytime, anywhere. You can do it all by yourself. Now, in a little bit, we'll talk about a game that does require another person. A very important game for developing creativity by getting rid of that urge to center things. But for right now, all you really need is just a game to open yourself up to new ideas. So often, people will close down, and they'll shut down, they're closed down. And because they're closed down to opportunities, they're closed down to awareness around them, they make mistakes. And those mistakes can be very costly. And when you're speaking, and you're making mistakes if they're dropping cards, or tripping over cords that are around, or forgetting what you have to say, those are serious mistakes, and they're caused because you aren't being creative, you aren't being inventive, you aren't thinking on your feet. And you can solve that and fix that if you get in the game. And the first game that Izzy Gissel talked about is called Radio Announcer. All you have to do is simply to act like you're a radio announcer. And you announce everything that goes around you. So if you're driving down the road in your car, just talk to yourself and say something like, here I am driving down the road, it's a beautiful day, things just cleared up, it was raining earlier, now the sun is starting to come out, I see it peeking behind the clouds. Over on my right is a blue Chevy sedan pulling up, getting ready to pass me. I am in the second lane and it's in the first lane and it's going faster than I am. So perhaps I'd better pull over here to the first lane on the far right side and I'm just pulling over that lane right now. Okay, and a blue Corvette is just going through the second lane where I just was and it's zipping past me. Doesn't have to be something interesting or exciting all you have to do is to become very aware of the everyday. The radio announcer game can be tremendously effective, is tremendously effective at getting you aware of the world around you. It's easy to do. Do it for five minutes, do it for ten minutes, however long you want to. Just practice it every day. Become aware of things around you. Practice it when you go on stage, when you're preparing to go on stage, before the audience gets there. So here I am stepping onto the stage. There is a cord in front of me that stretches over to the side of the stage, and it goes just past where the stairs are. It's a radio announcer thing to become aware of the entire stage, how the entire stage looks, how it's set up, what's going on on the stage. Get in the game. Get in the game, use the radio announcer game, and become aware of everything around you. Now, even if you're aware of everything around you, it still means there are some things you may not want to pay attention to. You may be censoring or cutting out. For that, you need to get in the game a little differently. Get in the game of improv. The radio announcer game is good. 
get you started. The thing about it is, is that after a while, it just isn't enough. See, you can't do everything by yourself. You're going to need some help. You need a little bit of help to get used to the improv. And the thing in improv, the challenge of improv, is that you need to build and develop things. It's so easy to simply censor and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. The problem happens when the unexpected occurs, you're not ready for it. Because in your mind, you've already ruled it out. You've already thought, no, that's not going to happen. So when it does, you've got some real problems. So this next game is something that is going to open you up to possibilities. It's easy to close down to possibilities, but this next game will definitely get you open up to possibilities. So that's what it's about. Creativity, getting the game, is opening up to possibilities, to realizing that something could happen. And if you're open to it, and it happens, it's okay, because you're open to it. To be creative, to be inventive, to think on your feet, and be open to situations. Open up and say, okay, fine, here I am. Let it happen. To make this happen, Izzy Gissel recommends the game called Yes And. Very simple game, very easy. And you play with another person. Here's how it works. For everything that person says, everything anyone says, you say yes, you accept it, and then you build on it. So it's yes and. That's it. Just continue building and supporting each other and seeing where things go. So if someone says, it's a nice day, say, yeah, it's a good day. And just won the lottery. And they say, great, you just won the lottery. I just discovered that I need something to pay for my house. You say, really? You need something to pay for your house? That's wonderful. I just discovered that I can do that with my lottery winnings. Great, you're going to do that with your lottery winnings. Wonderful. And my house needs painting. Yes, and. It's simple. But it does require you have to be working with somebody else. And it requires you being open. Open and accepting to what the possibilities are. A very simple game. Once you use it, you start opening up, you start realizing, hey, there are these possibilities, there are these ways to do things, there is a different way to do things. Things can happen in a way that I'm not quite planning for them to happen, but they just happen. And I can build with that, I can go with that, I can develop with that. That's what the Yes and game teaches you. And the SN game isn't enough by itself. Still, you're going to need a little bit more help. So even when you say yes and, there's still that question of, okay, yes and, but is that it? Is that all the possibilities? You play the yes and game and you build up the possibilities. The question is, is that all the possibilities there are? And how do you deal with possibilities you haven't thought of? The yes and game doesn't quite deal with that. The yes and game gets you started. But to really get in the game of improv, there's one final game you might want to consider. So far, we haven't dealt with a situation that happens Something really comes up out of the blue. Something you can't even really figure out or understand. 
And the thing about the yes and game is it's great. You go back and forth and back and forth, but things kind of come naturally. And sometimes situations don't happen naturally. They just seem to pop up out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, there you are. So even with the yes and game, you still haven't quite got enough, enough stuff to deal with and improv your way out of really troublesome situations. You need one more game. And the good news is a simple game, and even better news, you can do this one by yourself. So the first game you can do by yourself, the second game you need a partner, third game that you back to doing it by yourself. But this game will help round out the other two games. You complete this game, you'll really get in the game of the improv game. And you'll have a confidence you haven't felt before when you get up there in front of people, things go wrong, you'll be smooth. You'll know what to say. You won't freak out. You'll be ready. Instead of freaking out, you become. Instead of, ah! You'll know what to do. And the final game is the what if game. It's very simple. You just start thinking, what if? And then you figure out what you're going to do. What if you trip over a cord on stage? What do you do? What if you drop your note cards? What do you do? And just picture yourself in all these different situations where things go really nasty and wrong. What do you do? It's very simple, it's very powerful because it forces you to think of those situations that might come up. And instead of just hoping they kind of come up out of the yes and game somewhere, the what if game, you're very direct in saying, okay, this is a situation that might come up, what if this happens, what do I do? With the what-if game, you round out your abilities to do improv. You get your sense of improv straight. So if things go wrong, you know, what if this happens? Here's what I'm going to do. What if I drop my note cards? Well, then I'm going to have this ready. And it's this what-if game that opens you up. And you can say, what if things go wrong? You could also play the what-if game, things just to be creative in general. What if wishes really were horses? What would that mean? That can help you develop your speech. Develop creativity in your speech. So improv is not just about what to do if things go wrong. Improv is also about how to be creative. To come with new ideas in new ways. A what if game is great for that. What if your dreams came true? What if you won the lottery? What would you do? The what if game. Very simple. And once you start going with what ifs, you start rattling down, and then you become more and more prepared if things go wrong, and more and more creative about the way things can go. You start to open up to new possibilities just by saying, what if? Very powerful. Using the what if technique opens you up and rounds out your awareness of improv. Just try that. Just say, what if? Try the what if game. See where it goes. And it will open you up to all sorts of new ideas you hadn't thought about before. New ways of doing things, different ways of doing things. The what if game, tremendous power to open you up ways you hadn't thought about before. Now let's wrap up everything we talked about today. First talked about the new game of doing the radio announcer. Using the radio announcer game to open you up to what's around you. So you start to see what's around you. 
just by announcing things around, around you, just as if you're a radio announcer. This opens you up to get you aware, get you thinking. In order to be creative, you have to be aware. And it's a very simple game. You can do it anytime you want, anywhere you want. If you're in your car, if you're in your home, have a little bit of downtime. Talk out loud to yourself. Just narrate the stuff going around you. Describe it. Here I'm coming in the door, putting down my keys. Whatever it is, just talk it all out. Second game we talked about was the yes and game. This game continues your improv experience, continues developing your improv abilities. It helps you get in the game of opening up. Instead of centering things and closing things down, the yes and game forces you to accept whatever happens. That's tremendously useful when you get into situations you didn't expect. You've already got in the habit of accepting them. So instead of saying, oh, this didn't happen, or hoping people didn't notice it, or trying to avoid it, or running away from it, you're open to it. It's okay. You know that you can just accept it. So accept it, and then you build on it. Not only am I going to accept it, but I'm going to build on it. Yes, and. You go back and forth with the person. Yes, I did this and. So, oh, great, and back and forth, back and forth. And then finally, to round out your improv experience, just ask, what if? Get in the game of what if. What if things go wrong? What if the sky were blue? What if the moon were made of green cheese? Just take a look at all the different possibilities that are out there and open up to them. Just accept them. What if? Those two words stuck together are tremendously powerful. Children know the power of what if. You can know the power of what if. Just use what if. What if I suddenly started talking backwards? What if I started speaking in tongues? What if whatever it is it comes to your mind, you say what if and follow it out and see where that idea goes. Things happen on stage and they can go wrong at any time. Just as for me, dropping the note cards. And wouldn't you know it? A couple years later, same thing happened. Drop the note cards again. This time, I went down and picked them up. Went down and picked them up, and I turned and looked at the audience and said, you might have been waiting to see if I had dropped, would drop my note cards. Well, the wait is over. Simple statement. Now there's a note card. Some people chuckled. I got up, got all the note cards together. Things went on. And I noticed the audience was more relaxed, more comfortable. They weren't as nervous as they were last time. I felt better about the whole thing. I acknowledged it. I moved on. accepted it. And I realized the last time I hadn't accepted it, and refused to accept it. And so it created issues in my own mind and the audience's mind. It was a problem. But this time was smooth, it's fine, because I knew how to improv. Now, if you decide not to do these things, not to work in these games, that's fine. But you'll miss out. You'll discover that you aren't as creative as you could have been. You aren't as quick thinking as you could have been. Just a few of these games could help you develop your creativity. If you don't use them, you don't use them, but then you don't get that benefit. If you do use these games, you get in the game, you're going to find yourself more creative, more innovative. If things go wrong on stage, you can get through them. The games are simple, easy to do. They'll become a natural part of your routine. And you'll discover new confidence, new power, new speaking abilities once you get in the game.